Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this was the February 11th Cloud 2030 discussion, uh, and it was a really good one because we dug into what will change the status quo. We really went into what effects are going to drive consumers to have new choices, make other choices, undermine their confidence in uh, the way things go. And we did it in a really interesting way because we talked about Bitcoin and confidence in Bitcoin and governments and uh, what would cause uh, things to change. And uh, we covered a lot of ground. So I hope you enjoy this conversation. As always, please come in and participate, the2030.cloud. And I'm looking forward to talking to you there. Thanks. Is the danger from a technology perspective, are we going to see a discombobulation of our disruption to the to the centralized function of technology where there are leaders that say, hey, this is where we need to go in order to support this function, that function, and we're going to see it come from everywhere, and there's going to be so little control, it will be the Wild West again. Yeah. No, I think, I think you're absolutely on to something there, and the the notion that the, somehow the crowd will you know manage things in a more equitable way well i don't know let's just say there enough there's enough history particularly in the 20th century that says crowds get taken over they get led they get manipulated um that's a it would be tough for me to want to put my uh, put my future on and bet on that. And crowds generally think short term. I mean, these the idea mm. of somebody thinking about the commonwealth and the you know the 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 things that we think of as natural monopolies and and uh, common resources. Um, you know, the, you're, if you like Adam Smith and, and you, you go back there, you, you know about the tragedy of the commons. How does that play out in, in a situation like this? And I think, it's, I think it uh, gives us a lot of reason to uh, think hard about some of this. Uh, we're, we're actually going to the place where I was, I was hoping to, to the discussion would go today. Oh, good. Um, what is the topic? Well, what what I what I've been, you know, having us explore and what we've sort of been doing naturally anyway, which is nice, mm -hmm. is that is what does it take for consumers to decide they have power in the relationship that we have with these providers? Hmm. Um. And, and what we're talking about right now is that, and we, we had a, actually a really good conversation about this, about complexity and what, what I ended up terming the Jevons paradox of complexity going on right now in, in cloud infrastructure where there's, there's the cost of adding complexity is, is basically nothing or minimal. Um, so we're building very complex systems that have, you know, all this hidden complexity and we, we don't, we're not paying, we're not adding, we don't feel like we're adding complexity to our systems and in a lot of ways we're not. But what, what we keep, what we've talked about over and over again in this group is that the economic driver to go to a subscription model, to you know, pay a little bit as you go, to see it as, as these micro payments to get pulled into this, this system has very good short-term rewards, incredibly good short-term rewards. Right. And we keep being like, and, and the whole group is like, yeah, I, I'm worried about the trend line of where this goes. And at the same time, it's such a magnetic pull towards that, that outcome that we can't, res we, at the same time, we can't resist it. Right. I, I keep hearing us, us have this conversation of, well, yeah, I'm worried about what this looks like when Amazon, you know, gets five times larger than it is. And the behaviors, so that, that's a concern to me. But in the meantime, the behaviors we're exhibiting are only feeding that, that outcome. And none of us are thinking that we're going to change that. So what, what Sorry, does it none take of us for are, some... None of us are thinking that we're going to change... What it, none of us, what none it, of us are expecting... 
and I, I see this over and over again in the conversations I have, including my own, that we're changing the way we are building technology, selling technology, buying technology, you know, buying products for our homes that does anything to move away from, you know, except accelerate the current cloud models. And, and, and the, so, right, there, the, there's the no incentive for us to referring, what, what current cloud models are you referring to? Uh, the fact that I do everything as a SaaS, that I don't buy any infrastructure on my own, I don't expect to buy infrastructure on my own, that I, I want to continue to have Google and Facebook and Twitter and, you know, every other company, Amazon, uh, monetize behind the scenes my activity so that, that to give me better prices. Um, Right. I mean, I, we don't have to go to tech to see this. We, it was interesting enough, right? We were worried in the, in the 90s that Walmart was going to destroy American towns, which I, you could argue happened, because they would come in, they would reduce the prices, drive out the competition, and then when they were the game in town, you know, rate the prices would, would go back up, salaries wouldn't. Um, and you know nobody you know at that time we we didn't think that there was a reasonable competition for Walmart we were very wrong there um but if it feels to me like we we don't have an answer to when consumers buying this technology start making a decision that they don't they don't like that model that they want to protect their personal data that, and and desubscribe that was a long monologue I'm watching, I'm watching Rich too, because I see you thinking about it. Yeah, well, there are two things. Let's, for a moment, separate the individual consumer and everything from the small, small and medium business up to big enterprise. Um, two things. Some of them are in fact building out some of their own infrastructure and this happens in particular with requirements that are distributed and need to be well coordinated so right. you do you do find that second there is a kind of colonial power structure that's being established. And I'll talk about that in broad terms, but the, the same thing that has happened to the individual consumer that, you know, Shoshana Zuboff talk, calls uh, surveillance capitalism. Yeah. Um, where you become a, as a, as a consumer, you're getting all of this service first quote for free, where in fact you are the you are the product, and then trying to extract yourself from that situation is very difficult. That's happening on a corporate level, and what is happening there is you have the the giants, you have the Ford. You know, you've got Ford, you've got Caterpillar, you've got, you know, GE, who are less involved with actual manufacturing, and what they're selling are not hard products, they're selling mm. production time. So the way, yeah. in fact, you don't buy a jet engine anymore, you basically are buying hours on a jet, you know, useful hours on a jet engine, mm. with a jet engine. GE gets to keep the data. They have to because they're maintaining it, but they also take real advantage. Certain manufacturers are not manufacturing anymore. They are outsourcing parts they have for a long time. The electronics industry yeah. has done that for you know decades now. So it's not just happening with consumers, it's happening in a kind of a hierarchy and there is a there's a form of a new form of we'll call it data capitalism if you want to but it's it's um it's going to be hard to extract ourselves from that i don't know that there is a 
a good way to do it and quote democratizing it all and making it you know everybody gets a vote is subject to some pretty massive swings and some pretty serious volatility that folks are not going to enjoy very much. So wait, where does the volatility come in? Because you, I was with you until you described that, and that's... Soon as you um, have, well, hell, a run on, you know, a decision to uh, take a run at the uh, PEs by uh, going after games. <laughs> that, that's pretty serious volatility. And That's a, in, so it, it's interesting because this is where the Bitcoin stuff gets right. Bitcoin is really volatile. So being paid yes. in, in Bitcoin is not particularly attractive if it could crash and you're. Yeah. I, I mean, it's because it's a, it's the two things, right? People bought a pizza for a Bitcoin. They love to tell these stories. Right. And that's a ten thousand dollar pizza. It wasn't a ten thousand dollar pizza. It was it was a, you know, it was a three ninety nine pizza. pizza at the yeah. At, at the moment. Um, the, the, the thing that with, with Bitcoin is that it is uh, a limited resource. It, like there, there is an, there's an artificial limit to how many Bitcoins there exist yeah. by design. Yeah. And that, that is why it's a value store and, and not a currency, because even though there's short term volatility, longer term, the value of a single Bitcoin is going to go up, particularly as people who are holding Bitcoin end up passing away or, or losing access to their wallets, those Bitcoins mm -hmm. are not recoverable. So the rarity of a single Bitcoin is going up. No, that's, that is, that is exactly the, the qualities of an asset class, not a currency as you're absolutely correct about. The question then is, all right, what impacts the value or the value associated with a single Bitcoin. And um, I would say that's the place where, because it isn't tied to a physical good or there's very little in the physical universe that it's, it is tied to, it can be subject to major swings. And it is that that leads to some pretty volatile and therefore some potentially destructive uh, aspects. Um, I mean, hmm. yes and no. Uh, Bitcoin in particular, because it's a proof of work chain, it, it, it is rather tied to the processing cost. And um, these days largely to the cost of electricity. Um, the global value of Bitcoin uh, over the past five years has been very tightly tied to demand. Uh, and because it is now being treated as a value store, not only by, by public, publicly visible companies like Tesla, but even like even large, large financial companies, banks are, are, are buying up Bitcoin uh, just as a reserve. And, and, and that's where FinTech is, is coming in and driving up the price because in and order to be able to trade Bitcoin, by law you have to have a reserve of Bitcoin as well. Yeah. So so that is what's driving up the demand. And as as there's more demand, as as more companies lock in their reserves, less Bitcoin becomes available, which which at the same drives up the 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 price. As long as people are willing to purchase Bitcoin. There is no long-term downward trend. That there might be short dips, uh, as say one company says, "Well, I, 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 my reserves are big enough that I can sell off a, a, a chunk of it for profit," mm -hmm. or, or someone with, with has recovered, say, their, their wallet from ten years ago. Uh, and suddenly they, they, they find themselves with 20 Bitcoins and say, like, yeah, I'm going to cash this out. Sure. The, the, so there's going to be short, short dips, but the, the long-term trend 
as long as there's demand, it's going to continue going up. Okay. So you, you said the magic word, as long as there's demand. There are ways in which demand gets accelerated, and there's some very interesting ways in which demand gets decimated. And you know, while the blockchain itself is immutable, all of the access points into and out of blockchains are still very, very leaky. And some of them are downright, they're, they're, they have been highway robbery. And the, yeah. the thing around this immutable store, this notion that it's trustworthy, doesn't account very often for the shenanigans that go on in the ingress and egress into the blockchain. So, so all you need is one or two serious players who don't do a good job with an exchange or right. you know get hacked. Well, it's like what happened with the Mount, the Mount, the Mount Rock side. It's interesting because I want I would turn this back to because you, you're talking about this volatility, and I'm thinking about cloud. And because right, all you have to do is lose trust that Bitcoin is the transactions are accurate, and the value would evaporate overnight. Um, if if you felt like it could be manipulated by by certain parties or was shown to be that, which is a risk because of the way the the calculations are done, and and the interest, so, so, but I was, while you were talking about that, I was thinking about, and I, I'm, I'm using Amazon as a proxy for the public cloud in general, but I think it's a, it's a good proxy mm -hmm. because I think that the question becomes what would make Amazon, if, if people start moving away from Amazon, it, it won't necessarily be because they want to move to Microsoft or Google or Alibaba. Um, it will be because they've lost faith in, in public cloud or they found an alternative or something they've, they're taking back control. So either Amazon it would, so, e you know, I'm, I'm going to discount the scenario of Amazon continues on course and becomes, becomes the, just the behemoth and move towards what would cause that trend line to change or cause Amazon to not have as much power in the relationship and like reduce prices and, you know, for their margins to come down or become a utility. And so, oh, what's what? Why do you? You're talking about AWS, not Amazon. Yeah. Sorry, and, AWS. I should be and, specific. And why do you think cloud cloud service providers? Why do you think uh, CSPs are not going to find their way to uh, a position of being a utility, and therefore? Call, get called upon to be regulated as utilities? I, that's one outcome. Um, I think that they're going to resist resist that really, really hard. Um, and, yeah. and, and I think that there's a geopolitical challenge of AWS becoming a utility because it, it's, it's transnational from that perspective. And so if it was going to be the, the idea that we would have a international body regulating AWS as a utility is laughable to me. We can't do it as a single, as a single geo, a single political source. I mean, Europe's sort of, sort of trying, um, but they're, they're taking it from a, you know, uh, jurisdictional grounds and maybe that'll be what, but st starts the problem. But, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't see the, the so political wins making the head road, the inroads that a commercial consumer power change would make. Well, so take a look yeah. at what the phone company, if we're talking utilities, look at the phone company in uh, the hmm. 50s, 60s. They became a utility. They weren't a utility. They became a utility because of national security. And national security and trumps a whole lot of international uh, cushion, if you will. The other aspect with cloud and AWS's uh, 
fierce on that is a similar problem with Bitcoin. The amount of resources being consumed. Right now, a friend who is in the trades, he's an electrician, everything he works on, everything he's been working on for the past two years has been data centers in San Jose, Santa Clara, actually, because Santa Clara has uh, uh, their own power company as opposed to PG&E. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we can't produce the power, we can't produce the land space, the buildings and everything else without the cost going up. So there's going to be, uh, there, there is uh, a point in the uh, graph where suddenly cloud gets more expensive again. It, it will, uh, and part of my, my whole thinking on this is that the consumption models have been so baked in that we'll just bear the cost, you know, that it'll it'll add to the cost. But at this point, we would bear it. I I, I tend, to, and I, I think that there's an interesting thought process that, that says what would be, and maybe we don't even need to figure out the trigger, but what would be the reason that people would start saying, you know what, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be in public cloud anymore. I'm going to pull out, I want power back, I want control of my technology destiny, right? I don't want to sell my data. It's not reliable. The security is not there. I, I, I have laws that prevent me from doing that. If, if Amazon started having a downward trend in adoption rates, the infrastructure they have to maintain, they're building infrastructure assuming a you know, dramatic growth. Yes. And the inf they have to maintain that infrastructure if things are level or down. Um, they, you know, all of a sudden that that infrastructure cost would become onerous Huge, compared to yep. their revenue. So consider um, what hap what's happening in China right now happens here too. Uh, in China, China's getting close to nationalizing most of their large companies. In the U.S., we actually sit there and say national security, all all the cloud stuff are utilities suddenly people lose, international companies lose trust in these companies because they're controlled by governments. So Rocky, right. Rocky, Rocky gets to it, right? And you started, you started with this, Rob, and you said, what, you know, what's the trigger hmm. for this? Um, and it's not immediate, right? But it's, it does, it's going to come down to trust, right? I think that we're starting, we're starting to see that more and more is what's going to drop people off and we know what we you know we know we know where where some of the um the early questions of uh, or fears were and we start to see those start to bear fruit do i just do, do people trust mm -hmm. aws or you know or azure the the bigger the bigger clouds with um you know with their you know with something like security absolutely right they absolutely do do they trust them from a, you know, from a business practice perspective? No, but they were the only places to go right now. That's not always going to be the case as most of this stuff gets commoditized and level and levels right. out. So there is right. So then it's going to come down to who do I trust that's not going to um, enter my enter my um, industry and knock me out, right? Um, who do I trust that's not going to take out my, um, you know, my entire uh, reason for, ex for, for my startup uh, at the next AWS reInvent whenever we get those back? That becomes an issue. Or yeah. as we saw last night, which is absolutely hor horrific, right, from them, how do I know that Azure is not going to share all of my data with all of their partners? So that they can then go and market to me. I mean, if you haven't seen if you haven't seen Corey's thread on that, that is just absolutely scary. So, hmm. and then and then, which of the who's who's still going to be? Who do I trust to still be in business? Which gets us to, to the whole VC side of, side of the story. So I think Rocky is absolutely on on target here, um, and, and that doesn't even get into the geopolitical issues of trust. Um, of who do I who do I who do I trust at that point, so uh, it's, or or it's, or yeah. who's doing business with ICE? <laughs> yeah. 
it's, I, I think these are fundamental issues. It's interesting because one of the things I go back to is the complexity, right? Make just, um, and that becomes a resilience and reliability story from that well, perspective. Yeah, trust, but, trust, trust is also, trust, trust is, is a also, lot of things. Tr right? Trust is also choice and fit when you start to look at it, right? Everybody, what we've, what we've seen in, you know, again, going to 2030, what we've seen so far in it's, and let's, let's be honest about this. It's been a short journey in cloud so far. Relatively, <laughs> uh, that's true. Right. Is everybody, everybody jumps on. Now we'll start to see as we head towards 2030 and we'll see it early, you know, on the front end of it, people starting to pull back and they're going to start to say, okay, I got on here. I did all the stuff that they told me that I needed to do. I reacted. Now let me reassess what's really right for me. Do I really need everything to be locked in at, um, you know, at the level of an AWS? What stuff do I need to still bring back in house? That's a bet that that that's more that's more right to be brought back in in house under my under my own umbrella. What do I need to move someplace else? Those are sort of, I think that's the shift that we're going to start to see is a reassessment of all of the spend and infrastructure that people have put into cloud. Uh, I, I, and I like when you say that, because, right, I mean, that's, that's what, you know, from a business perspective, I'm, I'm working to enable a trend line like that. I'm worried that we've, we're just holding our noses and, and the, right, this is we keep we keep coming back. It's it's easier to hold your nose, overlook the things that are inconvenient, and keep barreling forward. There's the in order for somebody to to make a decision like what you're describing. They, there's things that have to be mitigated out of that as a problem space, right? As a you know, I, I, it's I don't an interesting. Know. Yeah. So well, here's here's one. You know, I think there's always something to be found in historical cycles and at one time and i think it was andrea or rocky were talking about the um you know sort of the, the telco uh analogies here and that was rocky. at one time nobody got nobody got fired for buying ibm would we say the same thing in cloud right now i'd say not right yeah you right. probably right. can get fired for buying ibm unless you're already an ibm customer but you won't get fired for buying amazon Amazon is but, is become the IBM of the right, this right, decade. Right, yeah. right, right. Now you won't get fired for buying Amazon, but is that the same thing? Right? Are I mean the patterns are the exact same? Yes. Well, that's what. It, I mean, this is it where when we talk about Amazon saturation, it, Amazon has reached a hundred percent saturation for companies. Right, they're using Amazon whether they in, know it or not in the U.S. In the in the U.S., right? That's mm -hmm. true. Okay. And they're true. they're struggling to maintain to attain or maintain po relative position in Europe. Slower to adopt, and, uh, is that and as you're as you're as you're kicking their butt in okay. Europe, and GCP is getting uh, more attention from the public sector. And when you, and when you start to drop in the geopolitical stuff, that's when you see people like OVH that are positioning right. themselves as the European hyperscale cloud. Exactly. Or you have the the EU uh, efforts like Gaia X, which is trying. Yeah. And you know, I whether that will be successful or yet another, you know, large smoking crater uh, that the EU often funds for long periods of time and you know doesn't show up with anything left <laughs> I did to be work. seen but I did, work, I did work around internet too i i try not to chuckle when people make it in, in, <laughs> interestingly though exactly. um right because we we make like the telcos are the same thing anytime we talk about edge we we like joke about the telcos not knowing what they're doing and we you know, I feel like in some of the cases, especially around just plain infrastructure as a service, the, the, the actual understanding of what that entails is stabilized. And so the, you know, the idea that, you know, Amazon, AWS and Azure and Google have huge first mover advantages, but 
I, those first mover advantages could easily be gobbled up in the next in the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I mean, it's short of buying actually buying the silicon, but um, AT and T and Verizon had first mover advantage in by by what a century over T Mobile, right? Well, and, you know, back to my Walmart. Walmart had first mover advantage from a distribution system, right? Uh, Sears could have had first mover advantage. On, they sure did. On Look where they are now. <laughs> well, and Sears, Sears was an amazing catalog company, right? They they were the they were the catalog. Um, yeah, they they really forgot that history, didn't they? Uh, History repeats. There's a reason for the phrase. Well, that, that, that kind of gives you that actually makes you real. Uh, makes me feel like Amazon won't win forever. So why is Amazon not winning in Europe, Rich? That's really interesting. Um, a couple things. First of all, what Microsoft is doing, what Azure is doing in Europe, is taking advantage of the fact that so many mid and large enterprises are already still very heavily um, invested in Microsoft as you know their enterprise software. And what Microsoft has done better than any of the others is figured out how to sell. They've put a lot of money behind their, their marketing and their sales. It is I mean, it's, it's awesome what they've done. So it's a smooth and to Mike's point about trust, people have come to trust Microsoft, possibly just because it's familiar and they're used to it, but there's a, there's a trust level. So if what somebody, if Azure comes to you and says, Digital transformation, no problem. You're already, you know, on the smooth path. We can make it smoother. Look at all the complexity. Look at all everything else that comes along with moving to to AWS. We're we're safe. We're safer. But that that story works better in Europe. Personally, works a lot better. Okay. Uh, this this is actually a trend line that that I've been bemoaning a bit with the Kubernetes stuff, but let, and let me explain this. Once you've once you've got a yes in an in an organization, it's much easier to to grow the that yes. So if if you're already using this was Azure's brilliant move. What they said was they said if you're a Microsoft customer, you're an Azure customer, and you can consume Azure like crazy out of that Microsoft account you already have you don't have to ask permission it to to anybody right. you already have it go 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 this is um, this is better than swiping the credit card you know you know they the the division leader or the you know small group leader saying fine i i i've had it with it i'm going to swipe my credit card i have signature authority great right we're gonna we're gonna go to aws it's yeah, let me look, look, look at entry. Look at entry points, right? Yeah. Once it's once it's in, right? And Office is already in, right? Yeah. Teams is already in. Once it's in, sorry, IT, you're taking but, a back. You're taking a back seat to to the business on that. Doesn't it? Doesn't have to be better. It's the organizational friction is much bigger. And this was like so. I've I've yeah. been watching like the CNCF landscape, and I'm like, what the f is going on with this? Just explosion of little projects or little things like glomming onto Kubernetes. I'm like, that is not the way to solve this problem. Why are you doing it inside of Kubernetes as opposed to solving the problem, right? They're, they're, we're making some very complex stuff and I'll, I'll stand my ground on this to the nth degree. We're making very complex <coughs> stuff inside of Kubernetes because it, the reality is the organizations are all saying yes to Kubernetes. So if I want to do something else. If I do it as a Kubernetes operator or a Kubernetes service or a Kubernetes whatever, I've, they've already said yes to Kubernetes. They don't realize whatever bespoke other thing they're adding. Now that's an ecosystem and it, it's potentially great, 
So as a product company, I could say, you know what, if I have a Kubernetes thing, I'm going to walk into every company because, you know, they've already said yes to Kubernetes. I'm an add on. I'm not a new thing. Um, and, and that's that's how these things start to get built up. It's funny because it does work in the reverse too. As something as soon as something becomes toxic, you know, solar winds, um, the whole that whole house of cards can crumble really fast. Um, it's an yeah. interesting. It's and funny to think think of this because as much as we feel like these technology companies are are completely locked in powerhouses, it's it is possible that. Uh, thread could unravel on them faster than we're thinking and Europe's a great example for that. Yeah. It'll be uh, also interesting to see what what actually is made of the the fact that we're looking at what effectively are two internets two global internets. Oh gosh. Where, um you know China is creating something of a size and of a you know of a power that is not going to be interconnected with the rest of the world. It's going to, for at least for the, the near future, uh, operate in, in isolation. And it's, a, it's an enclosed and contained environment on so many different levels. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, right now, I think we have so little insight into what moves things there, how that's, how that's going to play out. Very, very, very I think uncertain that's, there. Yeah, I think that's actually, um, from hmm. what little we've seen, what few windows we have on it, I think even the, the Chinese corporations and the Chinese entrepreneurs have very little insight. It's possible that there is a, yeah. internecine warfare going on within the the politburo and there's this is all just uh something that's a side effect of politics but we don't know and neither do the large companies in china yeah no that's absolutely right rocky i mean mm -hmm. jack ma you know going head to head with you yeah. know, the uh um <laughs> the people the uh, the PLA and and other parts of of the the Chinese power structure that is going to be an interesting one to watch. Oh yeah. Last I knew, he basically disappeared. Is there anything new on, on that? Oh no, he reappeared. He reappeared. Oh, did he? Okay. Yes. I didn't Got see. I didn't see that. Yeah, but yes. Yeah, he but the country the the um, PLC has downgraded him tremendously. They also just moved against Tesla, and uh, there there seems to be moves against other of the large corporations and and whatnot. So there's yeah. Yeah. there's they, something going on, and it's both political and, and economic. Techni it's the tech technocracy is mm -hmm. in turmoil at the moment. Yeah. Well, and, and I think we're getting into and and there's an interesting thread. Let me let me pull this thread for a second and then I'm watching the clock because we're going to have to wrap up. Um, Cuz we're I was just listening to news reports about the the lack of chips dry, you know, impacting production of cars in a material way. Yes. Um, and is as we continue to see um, economic aggression with China, it's possible that we would re, um, re onshore. Anyway, I, actually, I think we're going to see this. We're going to see re onshoring of, of industries um, for, for civil defense and, and, and isolation reasons um, out of this, including silicon fabs and things like that, that um, are gonna, they're going to be high incentives for that, which could actually create gluts of silicon availability in the market that can uh, can have pretty dramatic yeah. I'm, I'm getting nods from rich so that's the kind of thing that i would yep. point to mike when somebody says end of the pan uh, end of the pandemic you know things move you know back to the way they were there is uh there are some pretty strong forces at work here and when you know they're they're bigger than my brain can deal with. <laughs> it, it's interesting. The, the chip shortage is real. Um, 
part of it is due to the automakers misforecasting the demand for cars based on on you know their projections and releasing availability. Um, but it was already a, a tight market and under provisioned, um, which is interesting because some when I think about cloud, one of the things that you know we don't have any real insight to is is how much capacity is actually being overbuilt in cloud infrastructures and, and what would happen if there was a resource limitation from that perspective. And no, and then all you need is a is a, a real major breakthrough in energy production, nuclear yeah, nuclear fission, mm -hmm. you know, breakthroughs in solar, you know, and that changes the 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 calculus as well. Right. Well, I mean, apparently GM has a breakthrough in battery tech um, exactly. for cars, yeah. and that battery tech could translate into you know the solar might not be on the panel side; it might be on the storage side, yeah, or wind on the store. Like, like storage, like the ability to store electrons, could transform things in very dramatic ways. The 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 bow that I would put on this um, is that as much as I've been trying to pull our conversation into the consumers getting more power in the cloud discussion, the, none of these scenarios translated into the consumers waking up and deciding they wanted to change the cloud scenario. Every scenario we've had has really been some externality changing the industry that, that then let the consumers have more power. Who, who qualifies as a consumer, Rob? Uh, I mean, the <laughs> company's paying, uh, there's, there's layers of it. You were, yeah. you were right about that. But, um, and that, that is kind of where, where I'm going with this notion of the, you know, kind of the colonization at the top where they're, they're literally not manufacturing. They are, they are creating, you know, uh, an imperium, uh, you know, a, a basically colonial colonial outposts and some of those are big goddamn companies but yeah. they are at the if not the beck and call they're certainly at the mercy of some of their major sources of big tech it's like financial institute it's the financial industry the the real powerhouses are the large companies and and the uh, the traders and consumers are just, uh, they're, they're actually one of the products. They're, they're the, yeah, they're the yeah. products. Yeah. I mean, I, I think to a degree, the cloud providers are, are recognizing this already. Like Amazon with their, with their, with their Graviton processors, they, they are starting to build their own infrastructure. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, because yeah. they don't want to be at the, at the behest of, uh, again, as you said, exactly. of, of, of they are. Yeah, the question is, you know, where where do they where do they end up? But, you know, are they on the uh, at the mercy, or are they the or do they become Ming the merciless? You know, it's uh, it's a tough one. That's the nature of these discussions. All right, everybody, we are at the top of the hour. I I actually feel like we moved the ball down the field in this case. Not maybe a Tom Brady esque move, but, um, <laughs> but we, I think we we did we did. Um, advance the conversation, and Much, I appreciate. Wow, that. a Super and, Bowl reference. And well, I'm moved, dangerous moved, when I, I I just paid in my ten dollars for the week with my one. We we moved it a lot <laughs> further than he moved it yesterday, walking out of the bar. Oh, <laughs> oh single best video. Oh. When you've got that, when you've got two hands full of Super Bowl rings and a supermodel wife. He's like, yep, I don't care what people think. <laughs> his handler, his handlers, his handlers failed bad yesterday. <laughs> Ooh, now okay. I have to go uh, now I have to see it. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks. Thank you all. I'll see you Thanks. next week. Bye. Wow, that was great. Uh, we really had uh, a robust discussion about what could go wrong. This is the thing that we've been talking around quite a bit of what forces uh, transformation to a completely new technology based. And it's interesting, we didn't think it was the customers deciding they didn't like it, uh, but something else, some externality or, or bigger change in the market that would force this type of um, uh, seismic shift. We're gonna keep talking about it, so come back and we'll talk to you then. Thanks. <laughs>